discard those dark energies and then use dark patch to bring them back. And now again, just coming in mega handy to be able to search ev everything you want. So it appears Simone's eyeing up a Luminion or Crobat, so must not have a very strong hand Ooh. and is hoping to get bailed out. Crobat is so awkward in these spots though because Simone has three cards, I think, or so in hand already. So you're only getting three cards off a dark asset. You have to question if it's really worth it or not. Yeah, it's not really ideal to use Crobat so early on, especially when you can't thin more cards out of your hand. But also, in, maybe in some instances, you just kind of have to accept that that's the case. Because yes. going first, of course, you can't play a supporter card. So the right. minion isn't going to really get you anywhere in terms of actually advancing your board state. So maybe just take the risk on the extra three cards and hope you find something useful. You know, she has started a Kiram V, one of the better starters, because it is the main attacker of this Indeed. deck, of course. And a lot of things in this deck have a pretty hefty retreat cost. It can always be kind of annoying to get things out of the active spot. You know, we've just got a few ways to switch the active Pokemon here in this list. So the one air balloon being an option, of course. But looks like a Crobat is being decided upon. Uh, actually, I think uh, someone tries to grab a a origin form Palkia V, okay. but then decided not to. I'm not entirely sure. There's some kind of discussion going on already, it seems. Yeah, I think we're working maybe through some technical things, which, you know, that's part of these uh, productions, of course. we got to work through some of those things and get it all figured out. But Simone taking her time trying to figure out what she wants to do. Over on Dalton's side, starting that Mana Feet, not a great starter just no. in general. And especially in this matchup, it's pretty much a useless card, right? I mean, uh, yes and no. I mean, of course, you do might need to worry about Radiant Greninja d d doing some snipes, for example. Um, so, you know, it's uh, in, in that case, it can be useful, but, sure. uh, but it's perhaps not the most vital matchup to have it down. Yep. So we're just getting things sorted out here. Looks like a little bit of a uh, issue getting resolved. This matchup, though, on paper, we'll have to kind of see how it plays out. Like you mentioned, probably not something that has been tested much by really, uh, most likely Dalton Simone likely has tested this yeah, matchup, yeah, right? Course. But we'll see exactly how it plays out. I'm interested to see what will happen. Yeah, me too. So it's very interesting with the, the pick with uh, Curum, right? Because, yeah, because I'm ju I was just thinking over in my head and I was thinking to myself, okay, sure, it's maybe not, it would have been the most prominent pick going into the tournament. But one thing that's nice about Curum is that it's a little bit harder for the for Lugia V Star Spiffly to actually knock out one hit because it does have a lot of health. So you can yes. have to would have to rely on your Beltal. It has to be a really big commitment with the powerful colorless potentially or yeah, like you mentioned, that Evil Tall. Yeah. Now Kurum is one of the more powerful decks, right? It has no real damage cap, of course, dealing no. 120 damage and then 50 for each energy that you discard from it. So in theory, you can one-hit KO just about anything in the format, but it's just about how often can you stream those attacks yes. together. It's very costly in order to discard all those energy that you worked so hard to get into play. Yeah, exactly. And of course, uh, the way that the Kurum deck does that is for a mixture of things, you, of course, have the Origin Form Pack, your V-Star with that insanely powerful star portal ability to get energies from your discard pile onto your wall. Water Pokemon. Yes. You also have the Curum V Max's Glaciated World that can discard the top card of your deck, and then if it's a water energy, you get to attach it to something as well. And of course, you can fix that top of your deck with the Oranguru. Yes, that's one of my favorite parts of this deck, being able to guarantee that extra attachment through that ability with the Oranguru, putting that card on top. Such a great synergy there. And that's something I always love seeing when new cards come out, right? Uh, Kiram VMAX just came out not in Silver Tempest, but in Lost Origin, so it's still a relatively new card. And it brought back a card from all the way in the very first Sword and Shield set. Oranguru's been a card that's kind of popped up in decks here and there, but it's not super widely played, but it fits so, so perfectly alongside this Kiram VMAX deck, which is a card that came out two years after, <laughs> after the original release of Orangaroo. Yeah, exactly. Perfect synergy. And it, it is always fun, like you said, when these sort of combos come out. Because in some instances, the combos kind of come together, right? You think of you know, Lugia, V-Star, and Archeops. That was just waiting to happen, yes. right? But then uh, that's a little obvious, Yeah, right? yeah exactly. <laughs> But something like this, you think to yourself, oh, okay, no, there's this card that came out way before that actually synergizes really well with this and makes this a very viable strategy. And of course, Oranguru is a vital part of making sure that those glaciated worlds can fire off consistently. And also just a good card in general, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially with cards like Marnie being really prevalent in the format. Even if you're not using that uh, glaciated world to discard the top card and try to get an energy, you can just prep a supporter on top of your deck for the next turn, try to withstand a potential Marnie from your opponent so that even if they do disrupt your hand, you've got an option to work with. Yeah, Oranguru to me is one of those cards that really rewards skillful play, right? It rewards thoughtfulness, it rewards thinking ahead a couple of turns and sort of you know, thinking to yourself, okay, if this happens, uh, this might hurt me, so I'm going to prepare myself for that eventuality by, like you said, putting a supporter on top or putting something else on top that I know I'm going to need. It's really, really rewards skillful play in that sense. So with this Kiram deck, 
Obviously, we've got the Kyurem V in the active, which is great. You really want to get Kyurem down on turn one. What are the other things that Simone would really like to see on this turn one going first? I think you want to get a Palkia down, and I think that's probably why Simone was thinking to herself, oh, okay, maybe I just get a Palkia and just like accept that. But then if there's no other draw options in hand, then maybe that's why that wasn't opted for. Sure. I, I think it's... Uh, the fact that you're starting with Kyurem already helps a lot because that's one your main attacker, of course, so that's sort of something you don't have to like, worry about. But I think the main thing is just, yeah, getting out that... Uh, the, uh, the Origin Form Palkia V and the uh, Kyurem V and then on some more Gurus down. Yeah, sure. And uh, there's plenty of options with different support Pokemon as well. Of course, you know, we mentioned the Crobat and Luminion already, but there is also Radiant Greninja in yes. this deck. It is a great option to try to draw cards with that concealed cards. And it also gets energies in the discard pile, which synergizes so well with several different options you have with this deck. Yeah, Radiant Greninja is a vital part of how a lot of these water-based attacking decks uh, work, including just, you know, Palkia by itself, but also with Kyurem, because yeah, it's that extra, it's that double benefit, right? You get to draw the extra cards, you set up your discard pile for the Star Portal, and and you can even attack with it as well. And the Moonlight Shuriken is an absolutely insane attack. So a really interesting card there from the Ultra Ball we haven't even talked about yet. We see the Kyurem VMAX hitting the discard pile, so that's already kind of a an interesting call, right? It's an important attacker, but you know sometimes you just have to get rid of them. You play multiples, you really only need one or two to attack with throughout the game. Also, that Collapsed Stadium being oh. a stadium choice, I do believe, and not a card that we see all that often in these Kyurem decks, usually really wanting to rely on Training Court. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. It, it can be really great in a lot of instances. For example, if you want to you know, limit your bench up as your opponent, or if you want to clear off one of your own damage things from your own bench, Collapse Stadium is one of those really versatile cards that can help out in a lot of different situations. So I think it has a lot of merit to playing it, as we do see Simone does that now go for the Ultra Ball and yeah, does decide on that Origin Form Palkia V. And going to opt for a Rotom Phone Tray after that as well. Great card here, letting you look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose one, put it on top, and then you shuffle the rest back in. So great way to kind of set the top deck up for the next turn. You know, like we mentioned, Simone's hand is maybe a little lacking right now, wants to try to find a way to get out. But this is a card that also synergizes really well with the Kyurem, with that Glaciated World. Yeah, absolutely. There's a multiple sort of really great utilities that Rotom Phone affords you in terms of yeah, bailing out of a bad hand, being able to set up the top of your deck of Glaciated World. Or if you want to be really cheeky, say if there's something you want to grab straight away, you can Rotom Phone, and then of course use Primate Wisdom on Oranguru to grab that card straight away. Yes, yeah. very good play, especially if you're digging for a key piece. Maybe you're looking for that Serena or boss to close out the game. Yeah, and uh, maybe uh, thinking as well from Simone's side, perhaps uh, the choice to grab the Origin Form Palkia V was, was her thinking, okay, I know I'm not drawing any cards, but if I can Rotom Phone and guarantee a good card for next turn, then it's more important for me to get my regular setup going, and so I'd rather just go for the Palkia and the Kyurem. So not much going on there for Simone. Got, I think, the bare minimum of what you want, the Kyurem V in the, into play and the Palkia V into play. Now over onto Dalton's turn. He's going to kick it off pretty great with a quick ball, discarding that Archeops. You'll love to see that go, going first. Yeah, we're one of the two Archeops in deck already hitting the discard pile. So I'm sure of this, uh, Dalton will probably be going for that Lugia V straight away. Or maybe another draw card. We don't know what the rest of uh, Dalton's hand is like. So maybe he needs to draw some more cards. And I do believe, is that uh, a Luminion that he's eyeing up there? Is it a Crobat? It looks like it is Luminion using that Luminous sign right away to grab a Professor's Research out of the deck. So that is very telling as to what Dalton has access to. <laughs> and the answer is not much. The, no, <laughs> not much. And uh, would like to see more. So yeah, just going to... Professor's Research, get rid of uh, the rest at hand and hopefully draw some seven more useful cards, but not before benching a Uveltal Amazing Rare. Yes, very good to get that into play. It's kind of one of these cards that you want to not put in play until you're actually utilizing it, until you're actually going to be going in with that amazing destruction attack. But it's definitely better to put it down than research it away. Yeah, exactly. If you need to put it down in that instance, then the, you know you just have to accept that. Oh, no Lugia. Oh, no. That is a big miss from Dalton. It Having to go for the Luminion off the quick ball meant that he could not get the Lugia V, and the seven cards from Professor's Research did not yield a Lugia V out. God, that's a really horrendous professor's research in that case. Gosh, uh, not being able to really play anything after that and just going for a pass afterwards. And now it's and now with Simone being able to go, go for a quick ball and uh, maybe do a, like a really commanding lead setup. I mean, missing a turn on Lugia, we cannot overstate how huge that is. And Radiant Greninja is brought to the front. This can start to put some water energy into the discard pile. Quickball did discard a Melanie as well. So if you're discarding a supporter, Simone probably has plenty of good options. And I do think that yeah, Irida is yes. in the hand. There we go. So Irida going to be able to grab Simone 
a item plus a water Pokemon from the deck. Uh, it's called Irida, the absolute backbone of all these water decks as yes. well. We talked about how there's so much great support and so much synergy between these water attackers, but I think Irida is really what keeps a lot of these going. And right away, it is going to be the Capacious Bucket eyed up. It looks like the Curum V Max as well. Capacious Bucket, such a strong card for these water decks, especially considering that, th I mean, this is just a play you see all the time from a Curum player. Irida for the Curum plus the Bucket. Yes, exactly. And considering the Radiant Greninja is also already out, we know for a fact that Simone's going to be able to discard one of his two water energies to draw two more cards, set up a discard pile, get more in into her deck, and really just you know, be start firing off on all cylinders. So I think that'll just be one water in the discard pile, is that right? So looking for a way to maybe get another one down. Also would love to find the Origin Form Lugia V... Or sorry, the Origin Form <laughs> Palkia V-Star. We got all these powerful Pokemon here. Yes. And uh, try to maybe be aggressive with an attack this turn. Take the first prize card. In these type of situations, that's really what you want to try to do when your opponent is obviously not setting up as good as they could. Yeah, yeah. when your opponent's on the back foot, that is when you have to strike. You know, you don't always get the opportunity to do so uh, when it comes to against Pokemon, especially when your opponent has a very strong setup and you just can't go for it. So you have to strike when the iron is hot. <laughs> yes. And concealed cards will discard a water energy from the hand, drawing two more. I do think I see that Crobat. So oh, we could yes. see even more cards being drawn here. So going to play as much as she can. Put the yeah, put down that Kirin V Max. Attach a choice belt as well for good measure. Going to be useful for carrying things later. And going to yeah, attach water energy manually from hand as well. And now going to be able to dark asset for five cards. Yeah, drawing as many cards as possible here. Five cards would love to if if Simone can find a way to discard water energy and get a Palkia V-Star. She can pull off the attack here. Yeah, that's without a doubt what she's looking for here. So let's see what she has access to. I do see an air balloon. But see a couple of water energies. I don't see many ways to get a Pokemon, though, unfortunately. And no ways to discard those energies either. Mm. Could always go for just the random glaciated world, see if you hit an energy, but that's, uh, I think, maybe a little ill-advised. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think ill-advised, especially considering there's no other way to get the third oh. water energy on. Oh, but actually going to go for it. Let's spin oh, the wheel. Does not pay off in that instance, discarding an Irida, unfortunately, for Simone. Yeah, not, and that's the downside of using glaciated world in a spot like that. Irida would have been a pretty good card to top deck next yeah, turn. Yeah, exactly. Great option to try to get through the deck, but, uh, you know, use the Glaciator World. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it does not. Yeah. I, I think uh, perhaps uh, if uh, there was an instance where there was a way to get a third water energy on, it might have been worth the gamble, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, not in, they're not paying off, and so it's going to be back to Dalton, who, I mean, I guess the one saving grace for Simone is that Dalton, as we already mentioned, has not had a very fast start, right? Yeah. So you can always, in a sense, like, get away with having, like, a, a, a duff turn when your opponent has already had one as well. Right. And Dalton must have top decked this capture energy. I'm sure he would oh. have been happy to put that down last turn. <laughs> yes. So now Lugia V comes out a turn later than Dalton would have liked, but here it is. And now, I mean, there's not. Oh, Amarni is a great play. Shuffle those hands. Both players will put them on the bottom of the deck. Dalton will get five cards. Simone only yielding four. Yeah. I think uh, Dalton would be pretty happy to Marnie that hand away, given, the, of course, uh, how, how bad it was before. But uh, that capture energy top deck. Really bailing him out. Um, Simone, also probably not to be too uh, upset about this, given that she didn't have a lot to work with either. Maybe now she'll find herself with some more useful things. Uh, did, is that just a pass from Dalton again? It oh. was just a pass. At least has the Lugia down now, so we'll likely see some more happening from Dalton on the next turn. But this is a, once again, big opening from Simone. Maybe if she could find Boss's Orders or Serena to target down that Lugia, that would be such a commanding lead. That would, and that's absolutely what she's going to be going for. Going for the Conceal first, and going for the Conceal cards first, and now, of course, playing that Hisuian Heavy Ball. One of, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know about you, Chip, but for me, this is one of my absolutely like, favorite item cards I think that has come out in recent times. Oh, it's such a strong card. Just giving you that little bit of a fail-safe, a little bit of a fallback option, just to, in these decks, especially ones like uh, Kiram, where you've got a very important Radiant Pokemon that's a one-of. If you've ever prized it, you can just go fetch it out with this Hisuian Heavy Ball. Yeah. It works out so nicely. Yeah, very important there. Although we do see in that instance, Simone not finding anything from it, so just going to discard the Heavy Ball and then shuffle the prizes and put them back out. Does rearrange the order, though, so does. that Melanie does move a little closer to the bottom that of the prize. That is very true, yeah. So uh, if you assume like the regular price-taking order from right, bottom to top, then sure. she's going to find that a little bit sooner, which uh, could do well for her. Now, she's got the second water energy ready to go. Does she, f does she fire the pop lottery again? Here we go. We're, we're firing and discarding. Ooh, that Empoleon V does hit the discard pile. And that's honestly a fine discard, yeah, not a card yeah. that's very good in this matchup. Yeah, of course, this is a card that's seen its way in uh, a lot of these uh, water decks, mainly for, of course, Lost Box, of course, shutting off uh, that uh, Comfey Flower Selecting ability, which sure. basically makes that deck work. But yeah, in this matchup, you're fine to discard it. Yes, absolutely. Now, over on Dalton's end, 
this is where he needs to capitalize. He needs to find the Lugia V-Star, needs to use Summoning Star, would like to get one more Archeops in the discard pile if he can. Let's see what Ultra Ball has and what it discards. Yeah, so he will at the very least be getting out a Lugia V-Star this turn. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there was a chance to discard that second Archeops. So depending on what he has, he might go for the second Archeops and then play another discard card to get it, or in this instance, uh, just deciding to go for the Lugia V-Star straight away. And it can be okay to only get one Archeops. It feels real bad to not get the two, but sometimes it's what you have to do, especially in a spot like this where you've been behind your opponents and you are both kind of missing out, not quite firing on all cylinders really from either player here. Yeah. So if Dalton can still attach an energy from hand, use a Archeops ability to grab a double turbo plus one more energy card, we could still see the attack. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a missed opportunity for Simone, considering how, yeah, yeah, Dalton had a couple of turns in a row that really did, didn't work out in uh, his favor, but Simone not able to capitalize on, not able to KO the Lugia, not even able to get a single prize, right? So I think Dalton's got to be breathing a sigh of, relief, sigh of relief here, thinking that, yeah, considering how my turns went, this could have gone a lot, a lot worse. And it will be that summoning star, V star power, V-Star Marker being flipped and Archeops coming into play. Yeah, and I think in this instance this makes a lot of sense, right? You already know that your opponent isn't doing much either, and I think at this point you just have to accept, okay, even getting one Archeops out is going to do enough for me that I'm going to be able to like take a lead and then take command of this game. And I think that's kind of what's going through Dalton's head right now. As we do see that uh, Dalton going for that first Primal Turbo looks like yep. to be eyeing up a V-Guard energy plus a powerful colorless. So maybe a double turbo in hand, or Dalton is just conceding not attacking this turn. That is also a possibility. It's really difficult for Lugia to one-hit KO a Kiram V Max. It is possible. You would need all four powerful colorless energies to do it. Dalton's going to be going with the two-hit KO as that double turbo was in the hand. Yes, yeah, so you, you called it exactly right. The retreat of the Manaphy, and then that Tempest Dive, the first of many this weekend, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, not going to be quite the one shot on Lugia, but it's going to soften it up pretty nicely for Dalton. Yeah, it should be 220 damage. There is a double turbo and also a powerful colorless energy on there, so those kind of just cancel out, dealing 220. Setting up this Kiram for a nice two hit KO. Now, Dalton did grab with that Archeops one of the important new cards from Silver Tempest, that V Guard energy, which will reduce the damage that this Lugia takes, making it much harder for Kiram to reach for a one hit knockout. Yeah, v, v Guard, such an important addition, and uh, just makes that Lugia that much more like tanky threat that you know, might not, be, not have been otherwise. Just uh, being able to, you know, essentially have an effect of 310 HP, right? Which yes. for a two price Pokemon is absolutely insane. And, and it's incredibly relevant in this matchup as well for the math because if Kiram discards three energies, you do 270 damage. With a choice belt, that's 300 just mm. short. Oh, wow. So yeah, so that means you need to have to discard four energies instead. So yes. that's like that for the math, yeah, that's absolutely huge. Now, Simone does play an answer, though, does play that Temple of Sinnoh. We did min notice that in that last hand. It is in the deck list. So if Simone could find the Temple of Sinnoh, plus another water energy, we could see this Kiram take down this Lugia. Yeah, Temple of Sinnoh is one of those uh, other cards that has been out for like a little bit now. Not mega, mega new, but it's, especially with the Lugia deck uh, now being a presence, it, a lot of people are thinking that it's a lot more worth it to include uh, that type of Temple of Sinnoh, of course. It's shutting off the effects of any special energies and making it so that they you know, just provide one colorless and nothing else. Yeah, it could be very strong in a spot like this as that damage reduction effect would go away and that would mean Simone would be able to take this KO without using her Origin Form Palkia V-Star and leave Dalton with no Lugia in play, only one Archeops and an Evil Tall. There's really no way Dalton would be able to even attack next turn. No, absolutely not. So I'm sure that's what Simone wants to go for. So yeah, maybe we're going to go for a quick ball uh, and then maybe now find that Luminion V and try to find a way to just dig for the Temple of Sinnoh. I think it was it, well, it was in her hand right before Dalton played the Marnie oh, last yes, turn. Course, so yes. now it's on the bottom of the deck. So, so yeah, she's got to go find it, I think. Yeah. And that, that would be such a strong play if she could go for it here. It is just a one of them. Oh, no, it's in the hand already. Is it in the hand? Yes. That is massive. Yeah, it is there in the hand. Temple of Sinnoh coming into play. Yeah, and just... Uh, we want to sequence things correctly <laughs> yes. here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Of course, we've got to finish the quick ball before playing the Temple of Sinnoh, but that is absolutely huge. That means that, yes, yeah, Simone is going to be able to take this knockout and be able to do so without uh, using the Star Portal. And going to get out of that Oranguru as well for good measure. Yes, and can get an extra energy into play here. Maybe try to prep an energy on the benched Kiram V. 
Would love to, I think, also find the Palkia V-Star. Just really try to get through the deck as much as possible in a spot like this. When you're ahead, you really want to make sure you are staying ahead, that you're not leaving any opening for your opponent to try to come back. Yeah, and this now is exactly what Simone would have wanted. This is like sort of the, the capitalization we talked about earlier. It came like a little bit later than perhaps desired, but this is pretty much as, as ideal of a turn as Simone could ask for. Primate Wisdom placing a card on top of the deck. Have to imagine it was a water energy, <laughs> sure enough coming into play, that excellent Glaciated World ability. Now can still attach from hand, but here comes that Temple of Sinnoh. I think there is that Wash Water Energy in hand. Yes, of course, uh, a very important uh, tech card in a lot of these Kyurem lists. Mainly used, of course, for Lost Box to prevent any shenanigans with a uh, Lost Mine from Sableye. Yeah, and against Giratina, of course, as oh, well. Oh, yes, absolutely, with, uh, with, yeah, with the was it Star, Star Requiem. That's the, right, the, yes. yes. The, the one-hit knockout, but uh, now I'm just going to decide where to attach that. Yeah, just doing some quick math here doing 270 damage if you discard the three energies, which isn't enough for Lugia, but that choice belt is already attached to Kyurem, so 300 damage and the V-Guard energy being shut off by the temple. Yeah, and uh, interestingly, Simone actually opting to attach the Wash Energy to the Palkia instead. I kind of like this, actually, being able to go with a two-prize attacker in between your three-prize attackers can be really, really strong. And there is that Kiram taking the KO. Two prizes to Simone. Dalton just having to send up the Luminion. Now, actually, technically, the Luminion can attack. That is the way Dalton could pull off and attack this turn through a double turbo energy and an Aurora energy, potentially, and then also set up an energy attachment onto the bench. Yeah, honestly, the fact that Luminion is a very is, is a somewhat effective attacker in Lugia is like one of my favorite, like, you know, cheeky, uh, cheeky plays that you can do in Lugia deck, of course, with the Aqua Return. Uh, but it looks oh, like that's already yeah. enough, and Dalton's just going to concede. Yeah, Dalton scooping the cards up here, recognizes this game's not going my way. Let's go to game two, and hopefully there's enough time for me to win a game two and a game three. Yeah, and I think a lot of what that came down to was the fact that Dalton was not able to get out that second Archeops, because yeah. if there were two Archeops is out, you just send up another attacker, power it up easily, and KO the Kyurem, and you're good to go. But with only one, there was no real good options for Dalton to attack with. Yes, that was a not great showing from Lugia from its first game. You know, Dalton missed the turn one Lugia, missed getting the two Archeops in the discard pile, so he's really going to be hoping to find a little bit better of a hand to work with here in game two. We'll have the benefit, of course, of going first which is exactly what you want to do with these decks where your a main attacker is an evolution Pokemon. Yeah, of course, because uh, when you go first, it means you get the first chance to evolve, you get your first chance to do everything, and uh, I think we've often joked before about how uh, a lot of the Lukia mirrors will come down to, you know, who wins that coin flip. Sure. I mean, there are ways to come back, of course, of course. but uh, it is uh, very, very, very important and very strong to uh, be able to go first in these evolution decks. And especially because in the current format with the rules ever since Sword and Shield base set came out, you cannot play a supporter on the first turn of the game. So that does make your deck just a little bit less consistent in those early turns. You're really relying on finding capture energy, quick ball, ultra ball as ways to get your Lugia down. And if you don't, your opponent getting to, it's effectively like your opponent gets to go first if you miss the Lugia, right? Yeah. Because, and they get to play a supporter. So uh, it's really just sets you back a whole turn if that's the case. And it's something that I think informs a lot of the deck building choices in these Lugia decks because I think maybe at first they weren't necessarily playing as many sort of capture energy and other things like that. But of course, capture is one of those things that can get you the Lugia turn one, whereas a supporter can't. So in, you know, when you think that through, you think to yourself, okay, maybe it's actually a good idea for me to include more capture energy so that I can actually get a Lugia if I do go first, which is my ideal, uh, is it, that's the ideal yes. way to go. Now, of course, Dalton, like we mentioned earlier, did win a regional championships just a few short months ago. So he's certainly been in these spots. Someone who is definitely familiar with playing from behind. You know, you're down a game in this set. You got to keep your composure, try to find the path to victory, and we'll see what Dalton does, how he navigates this game. Yes, and we uh, do suggest Simone. Actually, has quite a few uh, Pokemon to start with, obviously, to put down, uh, as well as the two onto the bench. Yeah. So got. We've probably got a decent amount of set up Pokemon to begin with. Um, as we do see now, yeah, the, the players are going to start to put out their prize cards. We did see how vital it was uh, last game with Dalton having prized one of his Archeops. Let's see if that's the case here again. Yep, we'll see those prize cards here shortly, and these players are flipping over their actives. We're going to get underway. Yeah, of course, as you said, for Dalton going first this time, I'm going to be very grateful for that. And uh, starting with the amazing Raikou, it looks like. So no Lugia start again this time, but does have the Ultra Ball again with the Archeops discard. Yeah, it looks like an Archeops was ditched there. Very nice. And right away, Dalton pulls mm -hmm. a Lugia to the front of the deck. Yes. Not going to not gonna allow the same thing to happen uh, nope. two games in a row. So 
going to make sure to capitalize on be able to go first and just get that Lugia down straight away. So the Raikou is actually a very interesting card in this deck, something that you're able to play thanks to playing so many Aurora energies. Not really a matchup I think that you're expecting to utilize it in, but it actually could be pretty decent, especially with uh, over on Simone's side. She has started the Origin Form Palkia V. Oh, yes, and of course, uh, there's have that weakness to lightning, of course. So with a choice belt, even after it evolves into a, a V-Star, the Raikou can actually knock it out in one hit. Yeah, and even Dalton could threaten it next turn, right? Yeah. Doesn't even need to worry about finding a choice belt if Simone can't get this Palkia out of the active. But she is able to find one of the most important cards in the deck, and honestly, maybe in the standard format, that Battle VIP pass. Yes, it, it is what, one of those cards that pretty much... It's funny because when it first came out, I think people perhaps didn't quite fully cotton on to how powerful it was, thinking, oh, you can only use it turn one, later on in the game is a dead card, why'd I want to? But then you realize, oh, if I see it turn one, it, it, almost, not, it doesn't like guarantee a win, but it sets me up so, so well, it's worth having it, you know, playing it four copies of it and having the other ones be used as cards later on because turn one it is so good. Yes, it is so powerful. For these reasons right here, Simone just able to grab two Pokemon V, put them directly into play on the bench. Now Radiant Greninja using Concealed Cards, ditches a Water Energy, finding two more. Really would love to find an Energy Attachment this turn as well, I think. Yes, I think it's going to be very important just to start powering up that uh, one of those Kirin Vs. It has, oh, double Oranguru down as well, so going to be a lot of Primate Wisdom going yeah. on here in this, in this here game. And uh, debating what to swap over and actually, oh, just going to play for the, go for the Melanie. Yeah, get an Energy in play, draw a few cards. This will likely go to one of the Kyurams, could go to the Palkia, but with that Raikou in the active spot, I would say it's a little ill-advised. Unless, of course, the idea was to attach another energy to retreat to protect the... Potentially, the, the, that yeah, is that, fair. Yes. That is fair, for sure. Um, but uh, opting not to go for that in any case, so just yeah, going to attach to the Kyurum. Hope that Dalton doesn't have the means to get the amazing Raikou powered up, because, I mean, if Dalton was able to do that, that would be a free price turn, knocking out both one of your Gurus and the active Palkia. Yes, yeah, doing 120 damage to the active and to one of your opponent's benched Pokémon. And that would mean, you know, if you if Dalton's able to take a three prize turn here, that means he just has to knock out one V Max to win this game. Yeah, it's the, the math, the, the prize mapping would then work out very, very well for him in that case. As we do see there, the Primate Wisdom was well being fired off. Didn't quite see what swapped over, but you got to assume it was something that Simone would rather have on top of the deck. But just going to pass after that. So here is the opening for Dalton here. Let's see what he has. Is there a way to get another Archaeops down? Is there a Lugia V Star? Looks like not quite yet, but it will be a Marnie drawing five cards off the top. There's that Evolution Incense. Oh, that's big. But not another Archaeops. No way to discard another Archaeops. So this could be another single Archaeops game here. Yeah. And now here's an interesting thing, right? Dalton opted to attach the Aurora from hand, discarding another Aurora. If he decided to just Marnie straight away, those two Auroras could have gone back in the deck and then he could have accelerated them with the Primal Turbo and he actually drew another Aurora, so he could have oh. attached that and discarded the Archaeops in hand. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I think I understand Dalton's thought process, though. You do lose an Aurora, but you're hoping that off of your Marnie, if you don't find a way to get another Archaeops, say, in the discard pile, you're only going to have access to one Primal Turbo. So you want to have an energy attachment so you can just pull the two Auroras straight out of the deck. It's definitely unfortunate, though, that yeah. in this case, Dalton did draw into another copy of it. Yeah, but in this instance, it is still going to be paying off very, very well. We do see that yeah. one Primal Oh, the Speed Lightning energy yes. will work out. So uh, it, it's quite common for these Lugia decks to play like an extra sort of colored special energy, like a Speed Lightning or something like that, just to make sure that if you go through too many Auroras, you still have the means of powering up these attackers, and here that's paying off because we see, yeah, Dalton's actually be going to be able to go for that amazing shot and take the double knockout on yes. the Palkia and the Oranguru. Three prize cards taken here for Dalton. Half of the game yes, <laughs> for Dalton just here like on turn two <laughs> as well. And this is, this is the Lugia deck firing off on the you know, as as uh, we usually would. I mean, not even that, right? Because there's only one Archaeops out, but yes. even then, he was still able to take a free prize turn this turn. Yes, we've, it's definitely a better showing than what we saw in the last game from Dalton, mm -hmm. without a doubt. That Radiant Charizard does remain in the prize cards. Still a very good option. Uh, would love to find it later on. Concealed cards from Simone does ditch the water. Finds two more off the top. Although that not much else, it seems. Looks like a Melanie in hand, so that can at least get another energy accelerated. Really looking for the Kyurem VMAX here, which I don't think I see quite yet. No, there is a quick ball, so maybe you could you know, go for a Crobat and take more of that, or maybe you can even, of course, grab that Luminion uh, and then uh, use, use the ability to mm -hmm. grab an Iridite out of the deck that way. That would then guarantee the sure. Kyurem. Yeah, that would be a great way to guarantee it, but 
Do you have a way to get enough energy in play? I guess would be the question. You can attach plus Guru, so I guess that would work, right? So that would work, and that's a way that Simone will be able to pull off the knockout here. But Dalton with a Choice Belt and a powerful Colorless Energy already on this Lugia could threaten just the win. That's, that's crazy to think about, right? That you could actually just you know, get to that point with uh, being able to stack that much damage in, 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 with the end, powerful Colorless Energies. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. it would require all four of them but it is possible if Dalton can attach one from hand, Primal Turbo the other two, that would be the way he could win the game on the next turn. And I'm sure that's what, could, that he's, what he's going to want to go for. Now, it's going to be interesting because there's going to be a bit of a dilemma, right, in terms of um, if he has a way to draw more cards this turn. It's like, do you go for the Primal Turbo first or do you not? Because you want to, you're a high chance to draw one of the Primal Turbos, but sure. then if you draw two of them, then the play becomes unviable because right. two of them need to be in the deck. Yes, and that is always a, a tough call. And you want higher odds to draw into one, but if you draw two, it could backfire big time. Yeah, so I'm sure that's the thought process that Dalton's going through in his mind right now. As we do see, yeah, Simone actually going to go for the Cure and VMAX and go for the classic Capacious Bucket, get the two extra water energies off of that as well. Just going to get all the water energies in hand. Yep, and we will see the attack this turn, that Cure and VMAX combo with the Glaciated World and the Orangaroo, of course, so, so good getting that extra energy attachment for you. Yeah, this is how you do it. You don't want to be playing the lottery this time. No, you're guaranteeing that water energy on the top. Swap it with the Oranguru and then Glaciated will just put it right back on the Kyurem. And there's already an extra energy prepped on the bench Kyurem potentially, but if this active Kyurem goes down, obviously the game is just over. The Palkia V bench is also huge. This can let you get to the V star on the next turn. So that is a great card to see come down. Yes, it is, and uh, it uh, looks like uh, someone's just going to read what Speed Lightning does. It does just provide a Lightning Energy right now, and there's no, uh, like, the benefit is, of course, when yep. you play it from your hand on a Lightning Pokemon, you get to draw two cards, but it was played from the deck, so that's not relevant. No, like, V-Guard shenanigans or anything like that, nope. right? It's just uh, going to be enough to take the knockout, Raikou, with only 110 HP. Dalton yep. sending up the Lugia. Now, does he have the way to win the game? Primal oh. Turbo is going directly into the deck. That was a very confident promotion. I have, a, I have a feeling that Dalton's got the powerful in hand. Yeah, is like the, it there? It must be. That, that body language, like, yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah. Wow. 330 damage on the Tempest Dive, taking a one-hit knockout, and Dalton has now tied up the set one-to-one. -one. Those are two very, very quick games, it must be said. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And that's on uh, great on Dalton, conceding game one very, very quickly. He could have stuck it out, played for a few more turns, but that game was just probably never going his way. He recognized that, conceded the game, and is rewarded right away by winning a quick game two. And now there's plenty of plenty of time to, to, for this game three to finish completely. And uh, I think it's unlikely that we're going to see a tie here because I think both of these decks take too many prizes too many, too yes. quickly. Yes. And this is actually something that um, I've uh, thought about a lot until my personal experience when it comes to playing tournaments. And I'm sure you probably thought about this as well. There is a lot of merit to playing a deck that can both win quickly and lose quickly in sure. a sense. Uh, and because uh, so, so often, I mean, how many times have we heard, you know, people saying, oh, you know, if I just had like a couple more turns, I could have turned that win into a, 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 that tie into a win. Absolutely. But when you recognize that the format of the tournament is as, is as it is, and you don't have enough time to play full three games, you have to consider that in your thought process. Yes, has to be something you're thinking about without a doubt. And I think knowing when to concede is a really difficult yes. skill in the Pokemon TCG because no one really wants to concede, right? Oh, you, never, you never want to dip out of a game too early, especially if you have a small chance of winning. But sometimes, even if there is a small chance, the time is more valuable than that low percentage opportunity. Yeah, and you have to sort of recognize that and think to yourself, oh, okay, sure, there might be like a minuscule chance I've been winning, like you said, but in the context of knowing how much time I have left, it is the more... The, What's more likely going to play more in my favor is taking that, that concession and just going to the next game. And uh, I think it's one of, those, one of those skills that separates the goods from the greats. Game three of round one here at LAIC. And I believe Simone just drew and passed. Oh, no. And started an Empoleon. So this is not good at all from Simone's end of the field. Literally the last thing you want, going first in game in game three and just starting with a card that's useless in the matchup and also not being able to set up anything else. That's absolutely atrocious. <laughs> and it's also weak to lightning, worth two prize cards. Yes. So, I mean, that's Raikou food right there. Oh, Simone's got to be sad about that. So let's see if Dawson can capitalize on this now. We do see there's a quick ball discarding a boss's orders this time, not uh, Archeops, but still um, going to probably going to, at the very least, with that alone, be able to find a better setup than uh, Simone just did. That's... Uh, and actually just going for the Crobat V straight away. 
Yeah, eyeing up Crobat could just be wanting to draw some cards. I mean, this is this could be the game for Dalton, right? We've only seen one Archeops in each of the previous two <laughs> games. Are we going to finally see the two Archeops hit the discard pile? Both of them in play. I mean, that's really where this deck shines, getting two Archeops down and that Primal Turbo just getting four energy out of the deck so strong. Yes. So there goes, uh, there goes the Crobat. I think there's only two cards drawn uh, from the Dark Asset in this instance. Maybe that's all that's needed. We do see a V-Guard energy attachment from the hand onto the Lugia, and just a pass. Okay, so no Archeops down, but does at minimum have the Lugia no supporter played either? No, which is unfortunate. And meanwhile, on the other hand, here we go. Now we see Simone actually being able to start up easily with, of course, that Irida. Uh, and this is, I guess, one of the downsides of going first, right? Like we talked about before, is that you can't play a supporter, and if you have a hand that starts with them that would make your opening turn amazing, suddenly you're going first, and it means you're doing nothing. <laughs> right, and... I mean, if you could play Irida on turn one, I mean, it would be so strong. Get that battle VIP pass yeah. turn one, get another water Pokemon, maybe an evolution even for next turn because you're getting your basics with the VIP pass. But, yep, can't play one on turn one. So Simone was just forced to pass, now able to get out a little bit of help here. Now, this is going to be the only Capacious Bucket in her deck. We noticed in the prize card she did prize two copies. Does play three, so there will still be one. There is a way there to, uh, to get the... Water energy's out of the deck, which is still nice and definitely something she's going to need. Yeah, for sure. And uh, actually, interestingly enough, not even going for that one-off copy, just realizing at this point, I need to get more Pokemon on my deck. Sure. So just going to go for the Curing V and the Quick Ball instead, discarding a Lost Vacuum, and uh, probably going to go for a Crobat V, I imagine. Yep, could be the option for sure. Would love to get a Palkia V down this turn yes. as well. That's something. Yeah. Or, or Radiant, of course, Ninja, Radiant Ninja, yes. yes. So I do believe there are uh, some Water Energies in hand, so yes, I'm going to be able to use that to get those in the discard pile, draw some more cards, start setting things up for the next few turns. It, it, there's so many instances in which, uh, you know, the Radiant Greninja is the best thing to go for early on because it does pull that double duty. Yes, and it helps set you up for later in the game as well. I actually don't think I see a Water Energy in this hand, though. Oh, 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 okay. I mean, the hand was pretty large, so I don't think Crobat was ever going to be a viable option. No, no, that makes so sense. So that's then. probably part of it. But yeah, that is not great. Dalton does find that Lugia V-Star on his turn, but we still need to get Archeops down. Yeah, so let's get Archeops down, where find a way to get into the discard pile, because uh, right now that, that's just a 280 HP evolution that does 220 damage for four energy. Yes. But uh, that is, looks like, oh, an Aurora energy being attached, perhaps, to debating it. There's already, oh, having discard another Lugia V-Star. And, oh, Dalton's hand is really not good. I think he's got a Marnie in oh, hand. That, okay, okay. So, so he can play that at the very least. But I, th I think he's debating. It's kind of an awkward spot, yeah. right? His, he knows his opponent didn't do the most. I mean, she did play an Irida, and she did just, of course, draw a pass. That's probably why we didn't see Dalton play Marnie on turn his turn one, right? Yeah. Wanted to hold off just to kind of see what Simone had. But she did have a supporter card. Now, Marnie, it, it's always a tough spot where it's like you don't want to give your opponent a new hand when you know they're not really working with anything great over there, but at the same time, you've got to set up, right? You need to try to get through the deck. You need to try to find your Pokemon. You need to get your Archeops down in the discard pile. So Dalton is choosing, I think, the better option here, trying to make sure he is the one who's getting set up. Yeah, for sure. We do see that the Evolution Incense able to grab... Oh, there it is! Ultra Ball... Uh, Evolution Incense for Archeops, Ultra Ball discarding that Archeops plus another one in hand. This is... Uh, I think this is where Dalton's really going to start you know, setting off fireworks. Yes, absolutely. And that Evil Tall already in the active spot could see that amazing destruction. Just take a one-hit KO on to this Empoleon, potentially. One of the awkward things about this deck is that it's kind of hard to move between your Pokemon. There's no real air balloons, switching cards, anything like that. So you could manually retreat this Evil Tall, but it's already set up there in the active. You got one energy on it. Hey, let's just go ahead and start taking the KOs. It's kind of a lot of work for Simone to pull off an attack next turn. Yeah, it is. And I think that's the one thing that makes this okay, because obviously, usually in this situation, you want to be able to save the belt off later on to KO a big Cure and VMAX. But at this point, it's already in the active. Your opponent is clearly not doing much. You may as well just capitalize on this and just take the first two prizes. Right. And, you know, take the knockout before something like a wash water energy comes into play as well. Absolutely. So here goes Primal Turbo number one. It's going to look through. See, we see there the double turbo plus uh, a Aurora energy. Just going to make sure that uh, he does this properly and then go for Primal Turbo number two just to attach the second Aurora. 
Yes, five energies on that evil tall out of nowhere. Amazing destruction able to just take the knockout. It doesn't do any damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is just knocked out. Goodbye, Empoleon. If there ever a more devastating like sentence of attack text on a card than just <laughs> your opponent's active is knocked out, no questions asked. It's got to be up there, and we do see yeah, Dalton take the first two prizes of the game. Now Simone needs to find a way to knock out this evil tall this turn. If she's not able to find a way to get three energies onto a Kyurem VMAX, it is going to be evil tall just running through her board before she knows it. Yeah, and uh, we do see it Odia Dodo, so I think this is going to be what's able to get, to get her there. Maybe just able to find a Kyurem VMAX plus a Palkia and just you know, load up all the energies that way. Um, or actually, oh, we're maybe look for the Temple of Sinnoh. Okay, this could be another way of Simone slowing down Dalton a little bit here. Yeah, I don't actually think, yeah, Irda can't grab the Temple of Sinnoh. I think it can only yeah. grab an item card, if That's, I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, you're, you're right, so that needs to be fixed straight away. Yeah, there you go, just reading the card, making sure. Yeah. Like, uh, that would be a good play here yes. from Simone, try to slow Dalton down. She actually can't, by playing Irda, she cannot get three energies onto this Kyurem. I believe the Palkia V was benched this turn on the other end of the Marnie. I don't think it was in play last turn, if I, I'm no, not mistaken. No, I think it was, actually. Oh, I think was it, it? I think, I think okay. it was just benched last turn. Yeah, I could be I could be misremembering that, but I guess, well, I guess we'll see here. Yeah, we'll see shortly, depending on what she goes for. I mean, she has grabbed the Kyurem VMAX out of the deck, at least with the Irida. Now Quick Ball, or now Capacious Bucket getting a couple of cards, I believe, as well. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, to make it clear, yeah, the Capacious Bucket was in hand and is played, and then the Quick Ball and the Kyurem were grabbed from the Irida, and so now she's playing the Capacious Bucket. Yes. Just making sure everything's all clear here. <laughs> I think she's just, yeah. I, yeah. I'm a kind of. I'm not sure where Simone's hand is actually. Okay, there it, it is it, on the yeah. side. Okay, I was a little worried there for a second. It kind of looked like she put the Palkia or the Kyurem that she got back on top of her deck, but no, it looks like we're good. There it is in the hand. Yeah. So here you go with, with the Primate Wisdom, Water Energy on top. Going to of course use Glaciated World to yep. put it on straight away, and. Yeah, I think you may be right in the sense that uh, it's going to be tricky for Simone to get all of the energy on. I don't think she has, maybe she doesn't have a way to get the Palkia V-Star out, even if it, that was put down. Yeah, I think it is oh, in her hand, oh, actually. She's oh, got the Palkia V-Star in her hand, so I'm pretty sure that must mean that this Palkia was benched this yeah, turn. Yeah, so. yeah, no, actually, with the benefit of hindsight, yeah, I think you're right, because otherwise you just go for the Kyurem play, yeah, right? for sure. So this is, yeah, Simone is able to get an extra energy and play with the Kyurem, but it is just going to be KO'd by this Evil Tall. It would have been so nice if she could have tried to stick that Temple in play, render this Evil Tall useless, but it's just going to get this knockout, and Dalton will go to just one prize card remaining. And, and I mean, Simone could have tried to dig for it, maybe. Of course, uh, that I don't believe the Greninja had been used yet, so maybe could, she could use Concealed Cards to draw two. Um, just trying to decorate it that way. but no, I think she started the turn with concealed with, cards, so right. it was used pretty quickly. Okay. But, but I mean, now Simone's just in a position where she's five price cards down, and yeah. uh, I, I think I don't really see a way for Simone to come back here, unfortunately. Well, there's the Palkia. Yeah. Off the top, able to take this KO. Dalton does need to find a way to deal 280 damage, which means you need either three um, powerful colorless energies on a Lugia or two and a choice belt. If Dalton's able to find those pieces, he'll be able to take the knockout onto this Palkia V-Star. Yeah, and this is where it might be very important now more so than ever for Simone to find that Temple of Sinnoh, but she just played the training court, so she can't play the Temple of Sinnoh this yeah. turn. Yeah, needed to get the water energy back to try to draw with the Radiant Greninja, I suppose. Quick Ball can get this Kyurem out of the deck, but if Dalton just has access to the energies in the deck, if they <coughs> are in the deck, if they're not, you know, discarded or prized or anything like that with only one prize remaining, uh, then Dalton will just be able to pull them out of the deck, of course, with Primal Turbo. Yeah, it is uh, too little, too late, unfortunately, I think, for Simone. She's going to try her best, of course. You know, there's yep, no yep. reason to give up at this point. The in already game in three. game three. Yep. Uh, but uh, I don't really see much that they'll be happening other than, you know, just a cut KO and then Dalton finding the return knockout. Energy Retrieval, kind of an interesting card that we see sometimes in these Kyurem decks. Just can get you a couple extra energy cards, kind of a nice card. It does synergize well with a lot of what you have going on, the Radiant Greninja and, of course, the Orangaroo plus Glaciated World combo. There is the knockout. Just one prize for Simone. Now, does Dalton have the necessary energy to clean up this game? Yeah, only going to need free Powerful Colorless, uh, so as long as it has you know, free in deck, then you will be good to go, and there they are. So, Primal Turbo number one, going to attach two two of them. Primal Turbo number two, going to attach one more. Yep. Tempest Dive, KO, and Dalton will take round one of the last American Championships. Yes, what a comeback from Dalton after losing game one, choosing to concede that game, recognizing he wasn't going to be able to win. 
and able to come back, win game two, win game three. Pretty good showing there from the Lugia deck, especially in game three. That's what the deck is supposed to do. Yeah, game three was really the, sort of the demonstration of like the power level of what Lugia can redo his deck. Able to get both those Archeops out and start, you know, primal turboing for days, getting all the special energy out, which is completely overwhelming uh, Simone in that instance. Yes, so congratulations to Dalton. Of course, like we mentioned, he's a regional champion just a few months ago already this season. And starting off pretty nice here in the the home region international championships. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, commiserations to Simone as well. Like you know, in game one, we saw that she was able to capitalize on uh, Dalton's slow start, able to get that big knockout early on, and uh, Dalton was just forced to concede after that. So really, really well played from her to you know, especially uh, you know, as someone who's like perhaps not as experienced. So here on the main stage, obviously, it's always like very nerve wracking being up up on here against someone who is like, more accomplished. So I, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah, huge commiserations to Simone as well. Yeah, Simone played great, and you know. Losing round one is not the end of the world. Many amazing players have lost round one at the start of the international championship and then come back to have ex in, in 